Okay, kids. What we're going to do is we're going to go over topic two, practice page two one, understanding equations. Remember, an equation is nothing more than two expressions. An equation is nothing more than two expressions joined together by an equal sign that says they have the same value. Okay, so this has the same value as the other side of the equal sign. The equal sign can be thought of as the center point of a pan balance. Okay, so we're going to go over our homework today. Use the, the pen to make any corrections that you need to. Now, the difficulty in these problems is not the mathematics. The difficulty is in the reading of the problem and doing what they ask and the vocabulary. So let's look. They want us to substitute, which re means to replace, the different values of the variable to find a solution to each equation. In other words, what they want us to do is to take the variable and take one of these values and they want you to substitute the variable for one of those values so that the equation is true. All right. In other words, they want you to make the problem correct. Let's look at number one. Number one is 27 minus C. Well, in this case, you know that the number 27 minus C, this number is going to have to be lower. So you know right away that you can eliminate 35 and 45. And then you can use the inverse operation of 18, okay, plus one of these numbers that is left to get 27, or you can have 27 take away 18 to get the number you need. Either way, that tells you your answer is going to be 9. So you should have circled the number 9. Let's take a look at number 2. Number two, they are asking you Q minus 19. So some number minus 19 equals 12. Well, here are the numbers in the set that you can use. Well, in this case, you know that it cannot be 7 because 7 take away 19 is not going to equal 12. Now, some kids have made the terrible mistake of saying, oh, 19 minus 7 equals 12. Well, that is not what the problem is asking you. The problem is saying some number take away 19. So you know that you can't do 7, okay? So what number would we have left? Well, obviously, it has to be a number greater than 19. You could put 21 in there and do the math, but you know that's not going to work. 29 minus 19 might work, and 31 minus 19 might work. And so you could then do the math, and the correct answer is 31. So you should have circled 31. All right, let's look at the next problem, number three. Number three, they tell us that you have eight times some unknown number equals 96. There were, then you had the option of using S could have been 9, it could have been 12, 13, or 14. So in this situation, you know that eight times 9 isn't going to work because that's only going to give you 72. And then you try 8 times 12, and that would give you the number that you need, which is 96. So the correct answer is 12. 
12 is your correct answer. And you could have used the inverse operation, and you could have taken 96 and divided by 8, and you would have gotten 12 also as your answer. So that would be how you solve that problem. Moving on to problem number 4. The question is, 56 equals 7F. Well, this problem was one that kids asked me about. They were confused by 7F. All that means is 7 times some unknown number equals the 56. That's a basic fact, okay? You know that you have a coefficient of 7. So you know that 7 times the variable is going to give you 56, and the answer to that is 8. So you should have the 8 circle. Next set of problems. Tell if each equation is true or false for W equals 2 and 1 10. In this situation, you can do the math on a calculator. So true or false, you would take 28 and 4 tenths, subtract 2 and 1 tenth. Well, 4 take away 1 is 3, 8 take away 2 is 6, and then you could have actually stopped right there, so the answer is false. Over on this side, we have W equals 39.2 minus 37.1. In this situation, you simply do the math. 39.2 minus 37.1. And again, you are allowed to use a calculator if this math is difficult for you. 2 take away 1 is 1. Bring down your decimal. 9 take away 7 is 2. 3 take away 3 is 0. So your difference is 21, or 2.1, which is true. Problem number 7. Tell which value of the variable is the solution to the equation. So they want to know letter T can be replaced by one of these over here to make that a true equation. And again, you can use logic when you look at these. Some number plus 13.38 equals 19. Okay? Now, in this case, you could use the inverse operation, and you could do 19 take away 13.38. Or you could take a calculator, and you could just begin doing the actual problem to see if you could get your answer. Either way, you would find the solution. Okay, one way is going to give the answer quickly. The other way will take you some time. Okay? The correct answer is $5.62. So you should have circled $5.62. Moving on to problem number eight. Problem number eight, you have 19 equals 7, 19 and 7 tenths equals 41 and 1 tenth minus G. Okay? Well, you can always switch things around if you want and say 41 
and 110 minus 19 and 7 tenths equals some unknown amount. Okay? And you can figure it out that way if you wanted to. However, it is up to you. The correct answer when you look at this is going to be 21 and 4 tenths. Number 9. They want to know 7 and 7 tenths plus R equals 8 and 5 tenths. Again, you could use the inverse operation and subtract and get your answer right away. Or you could have plugged in, using a calculator, the many different values in the set. And you could have easily tested any one of those with a calculator to see if they were true. The correct answer is 8 tenths. So you should have circled 8 tenths. Writing to explain, Lou set up six tables for a party. 42 people are coming to the party. The important information is he's going to have six tables set up. He has 42 guests that are coming to the party. And he's planning to seat seven at each table. He's going to use this equation, okay, to come up with, you know, that should tell him he's thinking how many tables he needs. Now, does this say, he explain how he can figure out how many tables he needs? And in this situation, the answer is yes. Because you substitute seven for the letter P, so if you take 42 divided by 7, that would equal 6. So that is a good plan for figuring out how many tables he needs. And you explain it by saying 7 people can be seated at each table. So you have 42 divided by 7 equals 6. So Lou's plan will work. Now, one of the kids, several kids said, but what about Lou himself? Isn't he going to eat, which would give you 43 people? I will look at your papers, and I will decide if that was a situation for you. And you will, might get credit for it, okay? That would be the only reason. Number 11, 117 students and teachers participated in a fundraiser. 96 students participated. So of the 117, 96 of them were kids. Did 11, 19, 21, or 29 teachers participate? So they want to know if 96 were students, how many of that 117 were teachers? Well, the, t the equation to justify your answer could be T plus 96. Is that true? And in order to come up with the true statement, you would need to have 21 teachers participating and the sample answer is you substitute each number for the teacher's T, 21 plus 96, which equals 117. So 21 teachers participated. In other words, could you use this to justify your answer? That equation could be used because all you need to do is replace the T with one of these values and that would tell you what you needed to equal 170. Okay, the geometry application was a little bit more difficult. 
one of the things that I emphasize with kids is that you can make fractions easy to use if you write them as a decimal. Jerry built a table with a square top. That's very important because a square has all equal sides or congruent lengths. They're all the same length. The perimeter of the table is 18 feet. So the perimeter all the way around is going to give you a total distance of 18 feet. He knows that each table, he knows that each side of the table is either going to be three, three and a half, four, or four and a half feet long. Well, the beauty of this problem is you can write the expression, the equation, the expression could be 4s, meaning s stands for the side, the length of the side. Okay? Alright, the side length. So 4s stands for 4 times the length of one side. And so your 18 feet must be achieved by multiplying 4 times some unknown number. Okay? Well, in this situation, you can ask yourself, well, 4 times 3 only equals 12. So right away you can eliminate that because 12 is definitely too short for 18. You can then say, well, you know what? What if I have 3 and a half? Well, you're still multiplying 4 times 3, which gives you 12. And even if you have 3 halves, that's still not going to give you any more than 1 and a half extra feet. So this is not going to be great enough. So you can eliminate two of those right off of the bat. Then the next one you can eliminate is 4. 4 times 4 equals 16. 16 is not enough to give you 18. So you can eliminate 4. That leaves your only answer to be 4.5 feet long. So the sample problem, what they are asking, what the sample answer will do is it will explain to you a possible way of solving this problem. And it goes like this. Four and a half feet is the answer. Okay, they want to know the length of each side. Okay, which of these up here would be the length of the side. So the, your answer is substitute each side length, okay? And you know that 18 should equal 4 times the length of each side. So each side is 4 and a half feet long. And I will look over each of your answers and read them to determine whether or not you get full credit.